by the grace of our Lord, we're reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 14, and verse 12. Um, actually, chapter 14 and uh, verse 1. Now the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were only two days away and the chief priests and teachers of the law were looking for some sly way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came and, uh, an with an alabaster jar of, of very expensive perfume made of made of poor nard she broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head some of those some of those present were saying in, indignantly to one another why this waste of perfume it could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor and they rebuked her harshly leave her alone said jesus why are you bothering her she has done a beautiful thing to me the the poor you will always have with you and you can help them any time you want but you will not always have me she did what she could she poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial i tell you the truth when wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Jesus, Judas, then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' and Jesus's disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the, the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. Disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips the bread one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go, just as is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out of for many. He said to them, I told you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you in Galilee. Peter declared, Even if all fall away, I will not. I'll tell you the truth, Jesus answered, Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted empathi empathetically, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. 
they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to deeply to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further and a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass for him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned and to his disciples and found them sleeping, Simon, and Simon, he said to Peter, Are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for an hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them asleep, sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief, pri the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once, Jesus said, Rabbi, and kiss him. The man, seized, the man seized Jesus and arrested him. The one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the priest, cutting off his ear. I am leading a rebellion. Am I leading a rebellion? Jesus said, that you, come, that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I was with you teaching in the temple court, and you did not arrest me but the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. Now we are in verse 53. They took Jesus to the highest priest, and all the chief priests, elders, and teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the country yard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. At the, fire. the chief priest and the whole uh, Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but the t statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this man-made temple, and in three days I will build another, not made by man. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. That the high priest stood up before them, them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. And then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with a fist, and said, "Prophesy!" And the guards took him and beat him. Now we're going to verse. 66. While Peter was below in the country yard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at, 
closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, he said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a while, those standing near said, Peter, surely you're one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. The, then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him before the rooster crowed twice, You will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. I mean, the last two days before the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the true Easter, where the Lamb of God would die for our sins, but after three days, as it is written in the Word of God, God, because Jesus was found with no sin, was able to resurrect. Now we, it is Wednesday now, and going to Thursday, and the high priests were trying to find a way to arrest Christ so they can put him to death. But they were saying to one another, not during the feast, or the people may riot. They decided, therefore, to crucify him right after the feast. However, God had a different plan. Because Christ needed to be crucified during the feast. And as they were afraid because of the people, that they may riot, and Satan found a way with Judas the Iscariot because he was displeased because of that woman as Je as they were all Jesus and his disciples were in Bethany in house in the house of Simon the leper as they were de reclining at the table and that woman was the third one the first one was Mary Magdalene as John the Baptist was still alive the second one was Mary uh, the sister of Lazarus and Martha she did the exact same thing she broke down an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume as the first woman used her hair poured the perfume on his feet and then on on his feet rather than Mary did the exact same thing and she used her hair to wipe Jesus' feet in front of Jesus and that last woman we are reading in this chapter she took the alabaster jar of, very ex of the very expensive perfume and she poured the perfume on his head And there was a pleasant aroma coming out of that alabaster jar that she broke. And that was the reason why Judas Iscariot was displeased. Because the, that perfume could was about more than a year's wages and the money could be given to the poor. It was it was much. It was considered a large amount of money to go f to waste. 
other, many others said the same thing. Why this waste of perfume, they said. However, Jesus Christ rebuked them, saying, Leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. Because the poor you always have with you, and you can help them any time you want. Because, and in this very church, we do have poor people that we are helping out, because through them will be tested whether we love our brothers as we do with our own body as Christ commanded and then Jesus continued she did what she could and that is what Christ wants us to do do what you can do in the name of Christ for the glory of Christ and that is the commandment and the want of Christ and also she poured that perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial and he also added that what she has done will also be told in memory of her my dear brethren when we actually love Christ and we are sacrificing for our love because of our love we sacrifice something important to us no matter how big or small it is know that there is great reward to the memory of the person who makes such sacrifice because the Lord is keeping a book of memorials and it will be written in front of all powers of that day and that is why you should not hesitate to give because you love Christ by the name of Christ no matter what the sacrifice is you want lack of anything you're not gonna lose it on the contrary you're gonna receive a reward that will be multifold to what you offered and by the grace of the Lord and the mercies of the Lord you will earn eternal life and because of Christ we do give to other people because we do love Christ and this is what Christ commanded continuing on that kind of a miracle will happen that will make Jesus' arrest come closer to being actualized as the disciples are going to gather for the feast and it is important for us to understand that everything is made ready by Christ they did nothing and Christ wants us to do nothing but to give and if we and if we want to go exactly tell it exactly as the word of God is claiming it to be present our body as a living sacrifice how are we supposed to exalt Christ we're not sacrificing lambs anymore or oxen we're not giving away gold or silver these are not the things we're doing anymore because our, our belief and that is a belief that has and includes the truth because it includes love and love includes truth and our belief is to present our body as a living sacrifice to God and this is our greed we're not supposed to sacrifice lamb or oxen or any kind of silver or gold but rather we need to present ourselves and our body as a living sacrifice to the Lord a holy sacrifice and holy sacrifice means according to the Word of God and also means according to the guidance of God and it is very meaningful for you to present your body as a living sacrifice to God this is what this woman did and it will be 
It will be told in memory of her. And now, when they are now decline, reclining at the table and they were enjoying enjoying the feast again let us remember that the disciples did nothing and it is not worthy that Jesus said go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water bear in mind that at that time only women were carrying a jar of water the men were occupied with different uh, m labors and and he told them to say to the owner of the house he enters the teacher asks where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples and he indeed saw them a large upper room furnished and ready and we do not really know how God is going to act we only know one thing we know that everything is ready it is very important for us to understand it we don't really know how his work is going to be done in our lives we don't know how God is actually going to act we do not know nor we can understand or however if we follow the word of the Lord and the guidance of the Holy Spirit we we're gonna understand that we do not need to do anything everything is ready however we need to follow exactly the Word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit the Word of the Lord through our studying and the guidance of the Holy Spirit through our praying corner and then to our surprise and you can understand the surprise of the disciples when they actually did everything went ahead with every single detail that Jesus told them beforehand when they asked the owner of the place and indeed he saw them a large upper room that was already furnished and ready everything is ready in your life you don't need to do anything the only thing that God wants from you is actually three things that would be obedience to his word exaltation to his name to never stop from your heart and your mouth and your mind in your everyday life and being thankful to what God had made in our lives do not complain do not complain to people oh God do not have any kind of complaint in your heart all the complaints we give out to Christ will let him know because the that complaint will be transformed to bitterness and bitterness will darken our soul and our mind and our mind will bring down useless thoughts that is why you need to have a holy heart so that you can see the actions of the Lord every single moment in your life and whatever comes up in your heart for no, no matter what the reason is go to the cross of the recovery tell to cr give your pain away to Christ know Christ that I love you and I exalt you and I know that you're gonna take this away and you're gonna do what is best in my life the three things that Christ wants in our life that is obedience and that is what is gonna save us that's number one number two exaltation and third th a thankful spirit and from there on Christ has made everything possible Christ therefore went with his disciples to celebrate the feast and at that very day he taught them about the Easter of the New Testament as we do every Sunday he took the bread gave thanks and broke it he did three things giving thanks he took the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said something very important one of you who give me away will betray me 
and the disciples in fear said surely not I how beautiful is that spirit is it possible for me to be that person the only person who probably didn't say anything was Judas and Christ told him that you are the one and as he took the bread and broke it he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples saying take it this is my body and he did the same with the wine and as he took the cup as we read forward then he took the cup gave thanks and offered it to them and they all drank from it saying this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many do this in my remembrance proclaiming that I died I did not die justifiably but Christ also resurrected me and and this very blood was poured out for our sins and our salvation and as they did all of that when they had sung him they went out to the Mount of Olives they went to a place called Yesthimony the place where Judas is going to betray him in at and Jesus left uh, the nine disciples back counting out Judas and he took with him Peter James and John so that he can give the opportunity to Judas and he knew where Christ was to go to the high priests and guide them to the place and he gave him the opportunity to go to call the high priests so that he can betray him Judas is n not a betrayer he's something even worse he gave him away and Jesus only took three people and I was always wondering why only three these were some logical questions he gave he gave the opportunity to Judas to retreat as he knew where Christ was and he then left those three and he went on ahead by himself praying because he was deeply distressed saying Abba Father everything is possible for you take this cup from me but he didn't stop there yet not what I will but what you will and that is the perfect prayer when we exalt God give him the opportunity to act exactly as he wants to act in your life and that's what we like that's what we want because we know what we think and the way we walking is not what God wants and as the sky is afar from the earth this is the distance between your wants and roads and paths con contrasting that with God's that is why Jesus said yet not what I will but what you will what is God gonna do for you then what you never imagined what he, he had prepared for you from the beginning of the world for you that you are presenting your body as a living sacrifice to God and he's gonna bring in front of you what he had prepared for you and in, to your surprise you're gonna see that this is actually the perfect thing you were waiting for and you never even expected it to come to you but Christ said that everything is ready in your life for all of you that are here today because we came not for the time to pass by not for us to entertain ourselves but we came waiting for God and we do thank the God for that and then Christ went back Peter James and John being sleeping 
And he said to them, Are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? That is why, my dear brethren, let us pray about an hour every night. Do not say I'm, I'm exhausted. Do not say I cannot do it. Go and pray and say to the Lord, Please give me an hour. I want to pray an hour, at least an hour every night. It is hard. And it is hard for the person. But Apostle Paul says that I can do anything by the power given to me by the Holy Spirit. Not because I'm good, but because of the grace that the Holy Spirit provides me with. Do not hesitate to pr present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. Especially at night. As Christ did as he was praying every night and especially he was remaining till day dawn in prayer knowing that only God could help him let God provide us with grace and power so that we can take the right decisions in our lives and especially those latter days where things are going to become and have become harder and harder May God protect us, so that we may find grace in the eyes of God. Peter was saddened that he couldn't stay awake. He came back a second time, and they were f sleeping again. He went away again, and now the time has come. Rise, let us go, here comes my betrayer. The third time he told them, Are you still asleep? Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. They couldn't understand a thing. On a specific moment, when they were in the feast, they were eating, Christ told them that everyone is going to fall away. Because it is written, I will, strike the sh I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Have the Peter s declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Are you? Are you ready? Are you going to? And he told the truth. He didn't understand though that he is not able to do anything outside of the word of God. That he is not able to do anything without the help of God. He is telling the truth. He is courageous, but without the power of God, you cannot do anything like John. John never betrayed Christ, and only Peter disowned God. Do not say big words. And when you say anything, finish up with by the grace of the Lord, if God allows put God first whatever you may do whatever your decision may be and especially to what seems easy to you or given this is when you need to put Christ in front or else you are walking in a fan in fantasy you only imagine what is good and when you're walking that way trusting only yourself and your abilities and your thinking then you're gonna find yourself in trouble that is why you need to always put God first in the name of Jesus Christ by the grace of the Lord may God help us if God allows say these words and then not only the will, the will of God will happen in your life but always, some, sometimes, even sometimes, what you want won't be done. Because it's not what you need or what you want, but rather what God has prepared for you. And as he was speaking to them, Judas came. That is in verse 43. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve appeared with him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priest and the, t the teachers of the law and the elders in Christ went rather Jesus Judas went to Jesus with no hesitations knowing all the things he's done he's 
kissing him and he says to him rabbi now the betrayer had arranged to signal to them the one kiss is the man the one I kiss is the man arrest him and lead him away under God going at once Jesus to Jesus Jesus Judas said rabbi and kiss him the man sees Jesus and arrest him because now Judas is not able to understand anything he participated in the in the first Easter of the New Testament that is the Holy Communion after, right after that uh, Jesus told him if you have to do something do it now and the other disciples thought that he was about to gather resources for the poor but he went away he went to the high priests may God protect us he went to the people that wanted to arrest Christ and let me correct something he did not participate he left right before it he left right before the breaking of the body and the pouring of his blood and Peter the word of the Lord says then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest cutting off his ear and in another gospel we we see that this was Peter and Jesus took the the seven sea and put it back as we read in another gospel as well, as well because the word of God has to be fulfilled and now he turns back to those who are arresting him am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me every day I was with you teaching in the temple courts and you did not arrest me but the scriptures must be fulfilled then everyone deserted him and fled and he took the and they took him to the high priests and as we read in verse 53 they took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests elders and teachers of the law came together Peter followed him at a distance right into the country yard of the high priest there he sat with the guards and wormed himself at the fire and even though we read forward uh, about falsely false uh, testimonies we all we also read but they statements do not agree why would that be that was the case because Christ needed to testify no matter what happens it is by the Lord and it is given and planned by the Lord and then some stood up as we read in verse 57 uh, and gave this false testimony we have heard him say I will destroy this man-made temple in three days and will build another not made by man yet even then their testimony didn't agree the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus are you not going to answer what is this testimony that these men are bringing against you and he remained silent and then he asked him this amazing question are you the Christ the son of the blessed one and now Christ with boldness and with obedience to his father he said in verse 62 I am and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven and that is the rapture of the church he was referring to the rapture of the church when Christ is going to come down with all of the saints in the earth that will be with no believers after the seven years reign of the Antichrist and then the high priest tore his clothes why do we need any more witnesses you have heard the, this, the blasphemy what do you think and they all condemned him as worthy of death isn't this amazing they all condemned him injustifiably and the enemy of our soul thought that this was his last chance to put him on the cross and that will make him a sinner now Peter followed him help with the help of John 
who knew people that, w that would allow Peter to go into the country yet. And as Peter was in the country yet, one of the seven girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, Jesus, he said. But he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about. There goes his boldness, his courage. Nothing remains as the word of Christ was that they will strike the ser the serpent and the sip will be scattered. And he fled. Now the full power of the enemy of the soul was elaborated. And then the rooster crowed once. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to, Pe to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. And then Peter replied with something very weird. He began to call down curses on himself and he swore to them. I do not know this man you are talking about. Who? Peter. Moments ago he said I will never fall away even if everyone does. That is a proof that there's no one of significant strength in the midst of us. And as he was calling down curses on himself and swore, swearing to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. You understand what you are and what I am. We are helpless people of no power. We are full of fear. But thank you, God because there is now a way for us to be fearless when the perfect love of God is gonna live inside of you that is God and that absolute love is gonna cast the fear away and especially when the power of the Spirit comes unto you then there's no fear and let me plead with you never allow fear to come into your heart because fear is hell because the fear will lead you to mistakes do not allow in your to your heart to do not allow to your mind or your heart to accept fear do not be afraid of anything only believe and what are you gonna do you're gonna enter your prank corner and you're gonna ask for the blood of Christ testify your sins Forgive all of those people who have sinned against you. Cleanse your heart by the blood of Christ. And when your heart is fully cleansed by the blood of Christ, because you testified, because the blood of Christ will cleanse you free because you forgave someone else and you can receive power by that same Holy Spirit because you were filled by it then that absolute love is going to be, be it's going to be poured into your heart and that absolute love is going to cast the fear away and that spirit given to you will not be a spirit of fear but then when your heart is holy when you don't have any bitterness any problems and anything you come that comes into your life you give away to Christ then that full love absolute love is gonna cast the fear away and that spirit that you have in you is not the spirit of fear but is a spirit of love and wisdom you could be a different person a person who's gonna be holy 
a person who is set apart for the Lord full of hope because the faith will be a gift from God from that moment on and it will be filling up your heart you're gonna be f filled up by the Holy Spirit you're also gonna be filled up by power and then blessed be the name of the Lord who is making us always be triumphant through Jesus Christ and immediately after as we read in verse uh, 72 the rooster crowed the second time then Peter looked at Christ and remembered the word of Jesus right after he swore and called down curses on himself and he broke down and wept but we do thank God because our Lord visited him Peter he didn't say anything he didn't we don't know what he's what he said to him right after his resurrection we don't know what he said to him we do not know what Peter said to Christ or what Christ said to Peter but we know one thing that the blood of Christ and the belief in the resurrection of Christ is able to cleanse us free from many sin but sinning that way is tremendous calling down curses and swearing on himself but he is able to be cleansed and later on he will find himself in the company of Jesus Jesus will ask him Jesus, Peter are you do you love me? he will reply yes I do and Christ will say you do have a mission therefore you have to set to to be a shepherd to my flock and you have to follow me that Peter had nothing to do with the Peter we see right before the resurrection of Christ but even more importantly there's n there's also different Peter from the moment of the Pentecost and you have no equal you have nothing in common with the person you were before you were brought to the church and you were baptized with the Holy Spirit and we do thank God for that because that is a testimony that Christ is alive and because of that our soul is alive